Hey pups, RP here, and welcome or welcome back to another Pup Reviews. The series where I review everything in media, movies, animation, shows, anime, books, manga, video games, whatever. And today, we're looking at the popular Disney animated series, The Owl House. And no, I haven't seen the new episodes from season two at the time of screening this video. I have rewatched all episodes from season one, for the most part, for this review in particular. So if I miss anything, Please keep in mind that this video was planned long before the premiere of seasons two and three. So if I got anything wrong or missed anything, share some about Owl House facts in the comments. That being said, let's begin. As always, we start with the history of both the show and its creator, Dana Terrace, who was also working on shows like Gravity Falls and the DuckTales reboot, was actually much like the character Luz Nocera. Her early life starts in Hamden, Connecticut, born on December 8th, 1990. She attended a local Catholic school for eight years, St. Rita, and spent most of her time watching cartoons like Prop Puff Girls, South Park, The Simpsons, Garfield, and Studio Ghibli films. She also gained interest for famous painters like John Bauer. She even made a Pokemon flip animation book of Pikachu Thundershocking Charmander. She was also a dancer for 10 years and attended the Corporative Arts and Humanities High School in New Haven. She later studied at the School of Visual Arts in New York and drew for about eight hours a day. She was also originally aiming to get an internship for Steven Universe, but according to her, they took too long to answer while she waited to hear back from the Universe and Rebecca Sugar, considering she was a huge fan of hers. So she took an internship for the equally popular Disney Channel cartoon, Gravity Falls, and honestly, not a fan of Gravity Falls because of the character Mabel. But I already spoke about that in my Unpopular Opinions video about the Cal Arts girls. She even began working on a 2D based sequel to the movie Tangled, Tangled Before Ever After, as an animator. Then around February 23rd, 2018, she began development of The Owl House alongside another show, Amphibia. Both shows were greenlit by Disney and premiered on January 20th, 2020. So what about the story and plot of the whole show? Well, let's take a look at that, shall we? I want to take a look at the story first before we dive into the characters and their voice actors. Basically, a young girl goes to another world and learns magic from an older witch. That's basically the premise of the story. Luz Noceda was supposed to go to a summer camp, recommended by her principal after going hog wild with her creativity. She then follows a little owl to a portal from another world, known as the Boiling Isles. And there she meets Edith the Owl Lady and her quote unquote roommate, King the King of Demons. And under rescuing Edith and King from a warden, Warden Wrath, after the attempt to retrieve King's crown, Luz decides to stay and become a witch with Ida teaching her magic. Honestly, the story is like something inspired by Harry Potter and Pokemon, but we'll get to that later. It's like if JK Rowling wrote Harry Potter the right way and not having wizards and witches magic the PMS away when they don't use toilets in the Harry Potter universe and have more LGBTQ plus positivity. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Onward to the characters. Our main girl, Luce, voiced by Sarah Nicole Robles, who also voiced the character Maroli from Boss Baby Back in Business, is basically Dana's spirit animal. With her over-the-top creativity, her individuality, being a fangirl, she's also my spirit animal. She aspires to be different and unique and overall creative. And despite being a human and not someone born in the Boiling Isles, she still aspires to be a witch and is willing to go to any lengths to become a witch. We've also got her mentor and mother figure, Ida, voiced by Wendy Mellick, who you may recognize as the following. Teacher from The Emperor's New Groove, Beautiful Gorgeous from The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Mrs. X from The X's, and Beatrice Horseman from Bojack Horseman. She's basically the more rebellious version of Toriel from Undertale, in my best and honest opinion. She's fun-loving, daring, surprisingly foxy for her age, but she's also born with a curse, caused by her sister out of jealousy, and worries she may not make it into a coven. But again, getting ahead of myself. Despite her cool mom vibes, she does deeply care about Luz, as if she were her own daughter. And we can't forget the adorable yet fearsome King of Demons, King, voiced by Alex Hirsch, who also voices another character named Hootie, and is a voice actor and creator of Gravity Falls. He's best known for voicing a lot of characters on that show. You may recognize his voice talents as Grunkle Stan, and more notably Bill Cipher. He also voiced various characters for the show Fish Hooks, more notably Kamantha and her father. He also did the voice of the internet troll from We Bear Bears Halloween specials. King is obviously based off of Cubone, but 
He looks like Kibon and Puchi and used together, and it's purely adorableness. While he may not be the most powerful, he's sure to have the power to make our hearts melt with pure cuteness. And we can't forget about Luz's other friends, Willow, voiced by Tati Gabrielle, who had a role in the badly received Emoji movie. Eh, was it her full potential in that movie, I must say. But glad to see the Owl House is reviving her voice acting career. Willow's an herbal witch. I'll say for now, mostly focusing her magic around plants and flowers and such. Gus, voiced by Isaac Ryan Brown, who voiced Chomper in The Land Before Time, Journey of the Brave, and Bingo from Puppy Dog Pals, an illusionist who is obsessed with the humans and the human world and wants to learn more about them. And of course, Luz's rival turned possible girlfriend, Amity Blight, voiced by Mae Whiteman, who you may recognize as the following. <clears throat> Little Susie from Johnny Bravo, various characters on Robot Chicken, Cinder from Legend of Spyro, Eternal Night, Tinkerbell from the Tinkerbell movies, and Batgirl from Batman Brave of the Bold, and DC Superhero Girls. There's also a bunch of other characters as well, such as another bully of Luce's, Basha, who has massive Regina Dwarf vibes going on, Hootie, well, basically the literal owl house, the Bat Queen, Amity's older twin siblings, Amira and Edric, Principal Bump, with Simon Camilla, the mysterious Emperor Bellos, and finally, Lilith, Ida's sister. Long story short, Ida had a curse that turns into an owl beast. Lilith cursed her the night before a coven trial, a rite of passage type of thing, due to fear of Ida entering a coven and Lilith not. So out of jealousy and fear, she cursed her sister. Though she does have a lot of regret and remorse though. She truly loves her sister, despite them having a seemingly strong rivalry. Woo! Now that we got the characters out of the way, what about the animation? Well, let's find out. The animation is... well, how do I put this? It's amazing! It reminds me of some of the more classic 2D shows and movies I used to watch growing up, like the Powerpuff Girls or Billy and Mandy. It's beautifully made, the backgrounds are fantastic, like they're from a painting, the character designs are top-notch, and it's like Disney serving us some fine fancy dining with a big old glass of freshly fine wine to wash it all down with. There's something I could say negatively about the animation. It's fluent, well animated, colored, shading, and the backgrounds all look pleasing to the eye. And anything negative I have to say would be the most minor of nitpicks. That aside, moving on to my final thoughts. I do want to speak on some fun facts about the show and its characters before my overall thoughts and opinions. The character, Luce, was named after Dinah's roommate. Ida was based off of a lot of motherly figures in her family, including aunts and grandmothers. And the series was based on a lot of experiences from Dana's life, including one where she was bullied for drawing roadkill. I can kind of see why she was bullied for it, but it's also kind of concerning at the same time. But this is all from the Wikipedia. It was also based off of the game Pokemon Red. Her father, Thomas, who was an attorney, gave it to her as a gift before he tragically passed away in a car accident when she was only 11. She was also motivated to create a good story like The Owl House to prove that it was just that, a good story. And the name was given due to the fact that, according to Dana, it had a mystique surrounding owls. And don't get me started on how it's LGBTQ plus positive throughout the show, with hints from season one with Luz and Amity being a canonical lesbian couple, which I'm always more than happy to see LGBTQ plus representation in anything. As long as it's positive, of course. Overall, The Owl House is an amazing show. It's like if JK Rowling wasn't so homophobic and transphobic, I wrote the Harry Potter book series, and made it the way it should have been, and got inspired by Steven Universe in a really weird way, like with The Owl House. And the fact that it was also inspired by the Pokemon Red game makes it even better. Again, hence that King is based off the Pokemon Cubone here. That aside, the show has a whole bunch of lovable and relatable characters, beautiful animation, and an amazing story to boot. So I gladly give this show 10 out of 10 owls and a huge recommendation to anyone out there watching. All right, that's all the time I have for this video. Let me know what I should do a review on next, and I'll see you in the next one, pups. Keep the outro, RP is out, peace.